We'll see for how long. <laughs> oh, that sucked. Um, I mean, I'm good. I I'm good with part two. What? Well, Kristen's not going to be here next week. Oh, yeah. Oh. Unbelievable. All right, let's see what happens. So we're back. We're going to wait for people to come in. You could just, we could shoot the rest of it. I don't like doing that. It's so boring. All right, we already got one person back. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. As I said earlier in the show, we're having a bad Wi-Fi day. Or there's an internet issue out there. So we'll just say hi to everyone again. Let us know you're here, please. Um, come back in. We're going to start over. Well, no, we're going to continue on part continue. two. Continue. Continue. Where we left off. Where we left off. Yeah, I agree, right? We're not going to just wait until next week. Oh, that's right, because you're not going to be here. You can do it. Yes or no? No, we should finish it up. Oh. We should finish it up. So you're not going to be here? No. Hmm. Where are you going? Doesn't matter. Hmm. Vacation? Yeah. No. Oh, vacation? You should huh. take one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I need a vacation. Wow, so nobody knows where you're going. No, you mentioned it on a previous show. Oh. East, so, East Stormy's back. She said where she's stuck. Damn stuck squirrels. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're going to give it a second to everyone come back in here. Hopefully, we go for another hour oh, God. without internet. Let's uh, not go for another hour. We have too much to do today. <laughs> no, seriously. No, I'm hungry. Yeah. Can any, is there any more complaints? This is, seriously. I, is it, we is, have the greatest job you, in the world. Is this how long you would expect it to take a homeowner to put this together? Two hours? Not a bad distraction. Easing it in. Yeah. Not, not bad. Well played. Um, to answer your question, no, not at I, all. I wouldn't expect them to be able to go any faster than you. Right? They could. And I mean, I'm trying to explain everything. All right, so we're going to continue on. Sorry about that, guys. We are back live October so, 21st, 2022, part two. Talk about the pump again. For the all right, yes. the arrow? Yeah, so there is an arrow on the top side. It's going to be really hard for the camera to get it, but trust me, pay attention to the arrow. Um, the arrow must be pointed to the water bar all right so i don't know how else to explain that would that be the lower side the no. water bar the, the lower side goes into the water bar oh i see what you're saying all right so we'll, we'll mention that that's a good okay. way of putting it all right so just a little bit of teflon don't need a lot um, a little bit means you went around three times i don't know i just go around till it looks good feels good look like about three times the teflon's doing well well okay okay miss technical does the first one count? One, two, three, four, yeah, eh, five. Huh. See, who? no one counts. You just go until you get it on there. All right, so you're right. The lower side of the pump would be what goes into the water bar. The higher side of the pump is what's going to be fed by the rain barrel. Good point. Okay, excellent. No matter what, that arrow is pointing that way, so that means it must be pointed towards the water bar. So we're just gonna thread that in. You're not gonna force it. Is your water bar pre-drilled for this? Okay, well, yes. It, there's a bushing that is threaded. Uh, it's half inch MPT threads right there into the end of the water bar. Mm. And that allows it so that the pump, don't force it, don't cross thread it. Just like that, see, nice and easy. And that could go on either side? It absolutely could okay. go on either side. And as I was saying earlier in this example, let's pretend the hen house is over here, the run's going that way, and the water bar is going to be on the inside of the run, your rain barrel's on the outside, so your pump is going to be on this side. And when you install it, you definitely, you have to have the water bar elevated ever so slightly, and I'm going to show you guys exactly what I mean by that, uh, when you screw it onto the wall where the pump is on the low side. And the reason for that is these pumps are not self-priming, okay? It has to be able to get the air out. And if you have the water bar like this, the air is going to get trapped right here. And it'll never prime. It'll never push water. It's got to be elevated just, just a little bit, just like that. And I would never just trust the lines on your coop. Okay? This is why you want the torpedo level or some type of level. All right? Um, and remember, I can't emphasize this enough, keep the pump on your hen house side because your building will, your, your coop will start to settle. If it's going to settle, it's going to settle more on the hen house side, okay? So why would you need a level if you're not making the water bar level? Okay, very, fair enough. Because a lot of times when people put in their coop, and even us, 
and especially in the beginning days, we thought it was level and it wasn't. And you try to trust, you're looking at your lateral lines on the hardware cloth. Yeah, it's like a grid. Exactly. Yeah. And you're, you, you're going to assume, well, those lines are level. So just, you know, go at a, a, an ever slight angle against those lines. And I have seen that. It's an optical illusion. You, and it wouldn't prime. You're like, what in the world's going on? You go grab a torpedo. Sure enough, it was either perfectly level or the pump was still up a little bit higher. So the level just gives you the... Confirmation. The confirmation of what's level. And then you want to take the pump, the side that's not the pump side and have it slightly up. Yeah, just enough. Maybe dip the bubble's just touching the line. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, it doesn't have to be a lot. Now, that is the assembly of your water bar with the pump. The other thing that you have to do with your kit is going to be, hand me the other brass fitting, this one right here. Okay. Um, this one has a female half inch pipe thread and a male three quarter inch male hose thread. All right. So it's, it's just like a bushing really. Uh, you're going to put that on the outside of the pump on the inlet side of the pump, just like that. Don't cross thread it. Now here is one we're going to need the crescent wrench again. Thanks to everybody for coming back. Yeah, thanks guys. I apologize. I we are. I don't know why. I don't know if they're doing internet service locally. Maybe we're having a bad router day. Now you don't gotta kill it. You you know don't break it. Don't crack it. Just use your best judgment. I always like to keep it where it's flat on top. I don't know. It's just a stupid thing of mine. But just a little brass fitting right there on the end of the pump. Okay. Now, we are ready. Oh, no, we're not. We're nowhere close to being ready. Okay, we got one more step. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to take your other brass fitting that has the uh, half-inch male thread, pipe thread. You're going to Teflon that. I don't know. Okay, one, two. So that would be the smaller end. Yes. Of that piece. Or Matt, something like that. Fish and Matt Ryan said the tip of the day is don't cross thread it. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, you do not need to Teflon your hose side. Another mistake people make, which hopefully we don't run out of time, I'm going to explain that. Only your uh, NPT, National Pipe Taper or National Pipe Thread, I believe it's referred to. But you'll notice the difference in threads. These are just a little bit tighter. It's more like machine like. These are your everyday hose threads you'll see on your hose bibs. All right, so what you're going to do is now put this fitting into the opposite end of the water bar from the pump. Don't cross that. Did you see what I did there? You see, set it in gently. And I'll actually go counterclockwise. I can feel it. And then once it kind of sits down in there, and then we're good to go. Just to get it to catch. Right? See? It's not so hard. Crescent Scottish wrench. Wild Man says, is Matt making this kit up as a free gift for Ingrid's Coop? Yeah. I'd love our listeners. Thank you. And our watchers. Fine. <laughs> And Ben said, just like getting two podcasts in one day. <laughs> all right. Yeah, right. Um, so now there's there's the water bar ready for the heated water system. Make sure the pump's in the, pointed towards the water bar. You got the brass fitting ready so that you can connect the hose fitting there. Your discharge hose here. Now, do you want to go full on and pretend we have a coupe wall? I think we should. Okay. All right, because there's a couple more questions people have. So what we're going to do is we're going to go on the inside of the coop right now. We're going to use some movie magic. Okay, not really. Um, <laughs> why don't we get the water? Let's get the rain barrel out of here. There's a door frame there. Um, there's, okay. We're going to bring in Ooh. A, a rejected wall, actually. Why is it rejected? You know. It's, you're not making the wall feel good. Oh. oh, it's a rejected wall. You want to know why? <laughs> uh, I, we don't got time to get into it all. Um, but we're going to pretend. Actually, let's make it authentic. Let's show the pocket holes, which you would see, unless you have sandwich walls on our larger custom coops or Carolinas. Let's make it authentic. You know right. what? Here's the inside of the chicken coop. Let's do a little competition because th it is a good question. What makes it rejected? Because you have such high standards. We do, know. but there is something that our picker, Jesse, said, eh, eh. you know, they got a color code system. When they go and see the walls, 
if they tape it green, it means it's good to go. If it's, I don't know, they have a color code system in there now to kick it back to the builder. If someone out there can tell me what is wrong with this wall, I'll give you a free shirt. First person, first person wow. to tell me what is wrong with this wall. Okay, so Ingrid, you on that? Yeah, you may not be I'm able on to it. See it. I, I can't. Let's see, it. I can see it. Okay. <laughs> you can see, but you know. All right, so camera guy, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here a little bit. And we're gonna, we're inside the coop. Come on down here, don't be scared. And we're gonna install it on the inside of one of our walls. And there's a lot of questions right now that come up that we definitely need to talk about. And there's been some good information, bad information. So let's um, talk about that. This is a loud screw gun. I am so Somebody sorry. Somebody says one side is larger than the other. The nope. Opening. Okay. Nope. So John says the colors don't match. Nope. Um, Boy, we got some picky customers. We got some picky viewers. Sheesh. We um, show Matt Ryan's like pocket holes. What do you say? He said pocket holes, question mark. All right, so need to be more specific. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to use our inch and a half pipe straps. Pretend there's hardware cloth on here. We didn't have time to put the hardware cloth on. And we're just going to put the water bar on, all right? The question is how high? All the time we get asked this, right? Right, yes. How high should the water bar, this is our official stance now from now on, moving forward, even if you got silkies, I don't care. How tall should the water bar be? It should be chicken head height. It, is it head? It's head. Head height, okay. Well, we have Sir Albert of Cluxley. We and wanna then, go about beak height. Yeah, so Matt used to always say chest height, but Dr. Crespo has told us, our beloved Dr. Crespo, that beak height because they have to kick their their heads back to swallow the water exactly okay how tall is that though we still people and rightfully so they go well matt how many inches i don't know my baby chicks i don't know how tall and they're gonna be grab your hen over there now i know that hen is just sitting down but i thought just as props since they're here for a visual what we're talking about is oh yeah she definitely would be not that short there's your well, that's a frizzle. There's a bantam. Um, okay, so I'll tell you what. Here's what we're going to do. We want it so that it's beak height. Now, here's the problem with that. Everyone's got different sized chickens, especially bantams, Francis, silkies. Can you hold that for me? Perfect. Thank you. You put the water bar at the height you would for your chickens, your standard yeah. chickens. Right there? Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know if that stuffed chicken is exactly... It's not. We Did you bring a chicken? Not today. Shocker. All right, so let's say you're going to install it. And would you go right about there? I, uh, yeah. Also, you have the the ground level could change over time. Yeah, absolutely. You've got deep litter. Yes, type. and don't make the mistake. As your chickens get older, you're not going to want to raise this up because you, you only want to cut into the screen once. Yeah. Okay, you can, it's easier to put some blocks up here for yeah. them to jump on, or especially for your smaller yeah, that, children. that's what I would do chickens. For, the, for the bantams. All right, so I let's... I would choose the, the higher height. So let's do this. All right. Mm -hmm. Tell me when you're happy. Spin the wheel. We'll see where it stops. Got it? <laughs> tell, me, tell me when you're happy. I don't know. That, that's fine. That's fine? Yeah, you're being pretty consistent. I would say, see me, right? I, I, I'm, I'm in agreement with you, give or take. Let's say 15 inches. 15 inches. 15 okay. inches on the discharge end side. Yes? Yeah. You got it? So oh. We got some more questions or some more Yes, guesses. I love some questions. Um, Matt said the pocket holes should all be on the same side on the inside. Um, Koi Lake said pocket holes aren't lined up. People really love the free shirt. Oh, and nobody likes anything. Free. And you know Not what, Ingrid? Up. Speaking mm -hmm. of some free stuff, hmm. I think I'm going to skip the golden egg being installed by the hemp supplier. And I think we're just going to do it here. What do you guys think? We got some hemp out there. Yeah, so we don't have to wait. So we don't have to wait, right? We need some excitement. Yeah. We don't have enough excitement. How, do around we, here. how are we going to get it in there? I don't know. All right. All righty. <laughs> Low side. Right about there? Yeah, you want to use the torpedo level? Uh, we're going to, thank you. Okay, so you feel good about that? I do. Okay, so on average, 
14. So we got a one inch drop over a spacing 14. of a little under three foot. Okay. And that's measured to the center of the pipe. Yep, to the nipple. Now, I can't emphasize this enough. Don't trust it. How do you know my floor is not like this or like that or whatever? Um, use the torpedo. It will not lie to you. And you don't even have to go with that much of a pitch. Bring it up just a little. Bring it up. Bring it up. All right, go down just a little. A little more. Right there. Believe it or not, that's where I would put it. We do have it where the pump is on the low side. So what's the difference? You want to remeasure that and we'll get a, a difference for everybody? So now for our coops, okay, so those are about 32 inches on center for the pipe straps. We got 15 and a quarter for this nipple. All right. And 15, so a quarter inch drop. So not much. Yeah, it's hardly even noticeable. Right, but it is enough so that the air can escape. So incredibly important. Now, in case we got some people, something just freaked me out. What? But we gotta remember, we are now on the inside. Yeah, you were right? looking at the the wrong side. The hen house is over <laughs> there now, because yeah. we flipped. Yes. Yeah, Movie magic. All right, any questions? Somebody says, what if you mounted the water bar at a, at a slant so that different sized birds would have to nipple at the beach. Oh yeah, can it be angled too much? No, you can. Well, is there still gonna be water for all of the nipples? Yeah, I would think yes. that, well, then you'd only if it's circulating, if it's not circulating. So you would have to use the pump all the time if you did that, correct? Uh. If you did that, if you had a more severe slant, wouldn't you have to have the pump working all the time? Because the higher nipple wouldn't have as much water in it. This is why originally I wanted to do the show outside uh -huh. with water. Because um, we get that question a lot and I want people just to step back and think about water and gravity, right? If the water level is above the water bar at any point and the hoses are not restricted, the hoses are open, that water, you ever seen a poor man's level? Hmm. So I believe that's what it's called, a poor man's level, where you take a piece of PVC tube, quarter inch, half inch, fill up with water, make sure it's clear. And if I went here and you went to the end of the hallway, it will level off. And you can actually mark a perfectly level line. The same thing is happening inside your heated water system. If that, here, bring that rain barrel in. So as long as the water level is higher than the water bar, it will... Absolutely. Absolutely. And I was almost going to record this conversation I had with the coop that we did for uh, Fixer to Fabulous. When we installed their chicken coop, they did a lot of grading. They did a great job and it was up higher. So by the time we were done, the rain barrel was extremely low. It was like... It was like that. Okay? Kid you not. So now you've lost half of the capacity of your rain barrel to allow the system to work correctly. If this water goes down, 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 it comes below the water bar, even though we're only, yeah, maybe we got one third of the water left, it's not gonna feed the water bar, right? Because it's lower. Because it's lower. Okay. Makes sense, right? Yeah, right. It's just that simple. So that's one of the reasons why we love having it on the base. Would you? Even it. elevate this even more? You absolutely could. You Would that absolutely be could. And you definitely want to keep this for the most part level, but it doesn't hurt to pitch it that way just a little bit. Why, right? why, why? Well, because when water does come down on here, you don't want it overflowing back. Here's your overflow right here. Uh -huh. All right. If you have the rain barrel tilted back, now the overflow is higher than the screen. Okay. So when it fills up, guess which way is the water going to come out? Out the screen? Out the screen. Okay. And now you're going to flood your chickens. All yeah. right, so, so it doesn't tilt it this way. Doesn't hurt to have it just slightly tilted away from the coop. Away from the coop. Okay. Yes. All and right. People, I just so they know, if you have small chickens, you can use rocks, cinder blocks, something to put in front of the water bar because I have that, and they all jump on it and use the little ones all. You can even build it. them a little step. You can build them a step. You could do whatever. Absolutely. Okay, so um, what we're gonna do real quick is we're inside. Here, get rid of that rain barrel so we can be inside our run. People just Yay, say, we're back inside the run. You're going to hook up your hoses. Now listen, I can't emphasize this enough. This is just hose 101. 
someone has a hose. Yeah, I didn't take that class. Um, if you have your hose fitting, and there is not that rubber gasket O-ring inside here. In this case, this is red. Sometimes they're white. Sometimes they're black. If that's not in there, I don't care how much you tighten this. It's not going to seal. If it is in there, good. Keep that in mind so when you put it on... So you want the right angle going... Yeah, so you're going to have the right angle of the hose to the water bar or to the pump, okay? Now, I have never had to get a set of channel locks. This is why I said earlier you shouldn't need them, but they will be nice to have. Where this is when, if you do want to tighten it up or have the need to tighten it up, um, use your channel locks and just snug it. The mistake people make is they over tighten that kinking that o-ring on the inside and then it's going to leak mm. and trying to go tighter doesn't solve the problem you just need it to hand tight yes okay a, a good hand tight um okay so th that's it for hooking up the hoses to the water bar other than you'd have to cut the holes in the screen again i've got videos showing all that out there here's the other critical part that i cannot emphasize enough People are asking if um, the... Hold on, hold on. We gotta bring the rain barrel back. Bringing the rain barrel back in. We're, we're inside and outside the coop right now. All right, what's the question, Ingrid? So people are, are guessing on what's wrong with the, the wall, saying that's not squared, or should it be framed for a door opening? Or the wood... It, I'm, no. gonna I'm gonna give some clues. All right. It's very obvious, but you got to know our coops. You got to know these walls. Okay, I cannot emphasize this enough. And now we can start talking electrical a little. Bring. Let's see. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now what we have here is the electric plug for the pump. Now the electric that you're going to plug into is going to be your normal. 110, 120, whichever you want to refer to it as, um, AC, alternating current, the regular plugs you have in your house. And in order for this system to work correctly, you have to have something tell the pump when to turn on and when to turn off. Because we don't want it running constantly. Correct. The pump does have a 30,000 hour life, um, but if things are not installed correctly, it, it will fail on you, especially if you don't have power, it's going to freeze and crack. The mistake people have made is this little device here called the heat it. All this is, is a thermostatic switch. If I remember correctly, it's on at like 36 off at 43, something like that. Only this is what the only the pump plugs into this just like that. Okay. And then you plug that into your dedicated circuit for your heated water system. If you run an extension cord, which is a no-no, it has a higher chance of failing. I did it. I did. When I tested this system years ago, I did everything as bad as possible, and it still works beautifully. But I can tell you, technically, it should be a dedicated 20-amp circuit. Now, um, you plug this in so that the pump knows now this little yellow device will tell when the pump to turn on and off. Right. Simple. So it only works, only draws power when it's freezing. Almost Correct. freezing. Yes. The heater is self-regulating. It has its own internal thermostat in it. So all you got to do is plug this in directly into that outlet. For whatever reason, I've had a lot of people make this mistake. They plug the heater into this device and they plug their pump in because they think the pump has to run constantly, even in the summertime for the system to work. And that is not true. Gravity will push the water through. The pump is only there to circulate the water through the system so it has a chance to get warmed up again inside the barrel. Now in the summertime, I love Ingrid's pro tip. It's really hot. The water's going to be a little bit cooler inside the rain barrel and inside the, than, than it is inside the water bar. She had that idea of taking her pump and hooking it up to a timer so the pump turned on at nighttime. No, it turned on when it just before noon when the heat of the day starts okay. getting there and then it would turn off about six seven o'clock when it's not quite as hot so it was just running during the very hot heat of the day in the summer in, in raleigh perfect yeah so 
That is why even our basic water system is not the heated system. That's why it comes with a pump. It is nice to still be able to circulate that water. Are your knees hurting? No, I was reading comments. I had to get a, just a tiny bit closer. Oh, okay. It's always so good chat chat. Please do not plug your heater into the heat it, only the pump. Wow. These can go into the same outlet. Your heater, now with the 1500 watt, toss me that box. So let's start talking electrical a little bit. And Ingrid, you did mention there were some electrical questions. Well, that was, you answered it. You said 20 amp break or 20 amp. Uh, Here's outlet. why. If you look at an outlet, I wish I had an example. I don't. You got your 15 amp circuits and your 20 amp circuits for your outlets. They look almost the same, except for your 20 amp outlet's gonna have that little line going laterally. And if the electrician hooked up everything correctly, you should be able to assume and trust, which is scary when it comes to electrical, that it is a 20 amp circuit. I highly recommend a 20 amp dedicated circuit. So 12 gauge wire, 20 amp outlet, because when this is on, it's pulling, according to the manufacturer, 12 and a half amps. Okay, if it was only on a 15 amp circuit, eh, it'll probably do fine, but you're pushing it on that 15 amp circuit. You don't leave a lot of room for the other amps that this pump is gonna need. Now, I believe, yeah, it's right there, 0. 0.6, let's just call it one amps. So technically, when this system is running together, it should not have any more amps, pulling any more amps than 13 and a half amps. So you're in range of a 15 amp circuit, but electrical doesn't always wanna be fair and cooperate. And if you got a really long extension cord, you're gonna have a voltage drop. So I highly recommend, if you don't want to worry about your system, run that dedicated 20 amp circuit. Make sense? Yep. We have some questions. Oh, I thought that was... That was good? Jeez. We have other questions. Go ahead. Fire away. If you use an extension cord, which we're saying you're not supposed to, but in the real world, if you use an extension cord, what gauge wire would be suggested for your 20 amp circuit? It should be an, a rate, an outdoor rate. There it is. It has so much to do with length. The longer you go, the more resistance, the more voltage drop you're going to get. Mm. So if I ran, now, I'm not saying to do this, but I ran the 14 gauge, 150 foot electrical extension cords and it worked perfectly. And I wanted to do that just to see if it really would fail. I never did put an amp meter on it. I regret it. Mm -hmm. We should do that. We should go and put an amp meter on and see if it really is pulling 12.5 and yeah. one amp. Um, well, also, your extension cord would need two plugs. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's a good point. Um, 12 gauge, and if you got it in your budget, upgrade to the 10 gauge just to be safe. So the bigger the, the wire, the smaller number in gauge, right. the better it's going to do. So Ben asks, will the heat it be affected by the windshield? The hoses will freeze before the barrel. Great question. Let's stand up. Oh, get off my knees. You know, I made the same mistake, and I've had other customers make this mistake. This needs to be on the outside of your chicken coop. When I first did this, and I was really redneck, and I wrapped my chicken coop with the plastic, uh -huh. um, it was warm. It was very comfortable inside that run. And this was inside, so it didn't know to turn on. Mm. Yeah, I got lucky. Oh, but your barrel was on the outside. Yes. So you got to make sure this is on the outside so you get the po highest potential of coldest temperature. Mm -hmm. Does that answer that question? Yeah. Perfect. So John says one of the horizontal 2 by 4s should be pressure treated. That's it is. Okay. It is. Okay. The and then Scottish Wildman says that the bottom bit of wood meant to be on its side. Nope. Nope. Um, okay. So, so far, nobody's guessed it, it seems. Interesting. Yeah. We've gotten close. And this is how, see, and the point to this is I'm pretty proud of our picker. He's getting darn good at spotting things that are right in front of us. And that's the best place to hide things is right in front of someone. And if he didn't spot this and this wall would have went out, we would have had an upset customer. And he caught us and nope, kick it back. And uh, never got fixed. It can be fixed very easily. Maybe another little clue. All right, so heated water system, basic 101, a lot of advice, pro tips, right? Right, and it's 1.30, so. Okay. Just letting people know. What other questions do we have? So are we done? No, we're it? not done. Oh, oh. I mean, I don't know. Are we done with the heated water system? Is that what you mean? No, we just plug it in and we're done? You plug it in. Oh, wait. I, I didn't connect this other hose. 
Oh, well, yeah, you got to Where would this go? Well, are we on the inside or outside of the coop right now? No, great, great point. The discharge, oh, okay, so let's just do it. Let's just do it for, for. All right, so the end with the, the pump goes up here. No? Yes. No. Look at it, think about it. Which way's the water gonna flow? You're like, Matt, you can just tell me. Well, yeah, so you gotta think about it. So water's gonna push down and we wanna feed that pump. And that pump, that arrow is pointing and the circulation is gonna push that water. So we want it hooked up to the bottom, okay? Make sure your hose bib is open. <laughs> We've had that one, like, is it? Is the hose bib open? Wait, what? Yeah, it's gotta get water. All right, and then your discharge end comes up. See, we're, we're a little backwards because we're inside and outside, but take my word for it, that brass fitting, that I so skillfully put into that After water. After three tries? <laughs> Four, five, six, my, yeah. Um, it goes on the discharge end. Again, we got videos out there of this in use showing, uh, it's not really flowing. We got some restriction there. Pull the plug, let it flush, put it back in, fire it back up. And you can see it nearly, you know it's working well, that when this pump is operating, that water almost hits the other side, being pushed by the pump. And you can hear it too. You oh yeah, hear. oh yeah. It falls right about here. But if it's starting to kind of fall right about halfway or less, there's a restriction somewhere. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. I don't know if anyone's guessed this. All right. Someone was close. Someone was close. But close. We're, that's, that's, I'm gonna we're give not, someone a chance. We're not. We're not playing horseshoes. We don't want close. We want horseshoes and hand. Yeah. There's no close in chicken coops. In horseshoes and hand grenades. Yep. Someone guessed the pocket holes are on the wrong boards. I feel. I feel much better over here. That was tough over there. I think right. it looks all slanted, but I think that's the camera. So I think, I, I mean, I think in all fairness to our audience, they can't see it as well as you can see it right That right could in be. Front of it. Let me see. Because I'm having a hard time too. Um, here, can you move back and right, right, right there? All right, there is definitely something wrong with this wall. The lighting is very bright. Um, so that might be making it difficult. Mm -hmm. Um, it is something to do with the pocket holes. I'll just say that. But if someone wants to win a free shirt or a mug of their choice, um, they got to tell me exactly what is missing. Um, so, anything else? Was that fun? Was that a pain in the butt? It sucked that we lost Wi-Fi. John said the pocket holes aren't plugged. Nope. Nope, that's not it. Not, well, maybe we'll just leave it for next time. No, I think you should, no. you should say. Why? Because uh, I, I like but, to wrap things up. Yeah, you like to leave a lot of well, Maybe, yeah. maybe next week. And you have two here. things to say. Maybe next week. Oh. You have something about Southeastern to say and something about LinkedIn. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so listen. Everyone that's on LinkedIn, please go follow Carolina Coops on LinkedIn because what we want to do is start streaming the video chicken to LinkedIn, but we can't do it until we have 100 followers yeah. or more. So we're new there. So we're new there. Please do that. Never thought about having the Carolina Coops on LinkedIn. Anything you guys can do out there to help us with that, that would be fantastic. I have another announcement or a request. Please, um, if you guys are listening on this on a podcast, to write a review on the platform for the podcast because that also helps a lot. So liking the podcast, writing reviews in the podcast, whether it's you – Apple Podcast or Amazon or Google, wherever you're, Spotify, wherever you're listening to it. Um, just write us a review if you like the show. And if Please. You, yes. If you don't like the show, then let us know that too. I yeah. Guess. Is there anybody that doesn't like the show? <laughs> we can't assume that we're everyone's a fan. Um, so here's the other big one. Uh, this is for people that are going to be ordering a chicken coop. Maybe they ordered a chicken coop and they're waiting for it. Uh -huh. um, behind the scenes, what you guys don't see is every day we all are fighting to make these coupe as affordable as possible, okay? Even shipping. And we now have, out of the North Carolina office building here, a shipping company called Southeastern that they have been able to come in and give us better pricing than our broker. 
Whoa! So for, for the shipping the coops LTL. Yeah, oh, that's Ooh. fantastic. That is I did not huge. know this. Do they only service but the southeastern? But it doesn't stop there. Southeastern ships all over the United States. Oh, okay. Canada, Puerto Rico. Okay, we got coops in Puerto Rico. Believe it or not. The part I love the most, there's two things. When we are able to ship our coops directly with a carrier, not through a broker, we get the best customer service. Okay. Not so much through a broker, but we get the, we're getting the best rates. We're going to get the best of both worlds now. Okay. So that's going to be awesome. We're going to be able to pass that savings along to the customer and that customer service. Here's my favorite part. You ready for this? Yes. Live tracking. Ooh, you you can will see. get a tracking number of your chicken coop and see where it is, even if it's on a truck in motion. Hmm. Wow. I thought that was pretty cool. That, that is, is cool. Nice. That's like when you order food and you can see your little Grubhub guy or whatever making uh -huh. its way. And you're yeah. like, why is he stopping there? My food's going to get cold. Don't drop off their food. Drop off my food. Yeah, it's an Instacart. It's a like coop cart. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, that's great. Yeah, I wanted to share that with everyone. I thought that was pretty cool. So is that the car only carrier we'll be using? That's what I'm pushing for. Or I guess at least the first, we're gonna first keep choice. Make, we're going to keep confirming that the prices are going to be better. Okay. Because uh, we don't want it to start to creep up and then all of a sudden, you know, we're not giving our customers the best price possible. I just want to tell you, every day we are always fighting to keep the prices down which is so important with inflation and everything else that's going on, prices are just through the roof. And I'm yeah. not going to just say, oh, we're just going to increase our prices. I think that's taking the easy way out. Also, let, every, let everyone else do that. We're going to keep making ourselves better. Also, just let people know that we really got the hemp shipping prices down, that we're able to ship the hemp um, to the West Coast, and it's about $35, $33 in shipping. Unless you're in like some island like Washington Island or something in Washington State or, but for most places, even on the West Coast, we we're being able to get the hemp shipping costs down, so. Yep, and we're gonna pass that along to the customer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We are Foch and UPS has been a great partner. Um, yeah. Yep. So we have some more guesses and um, also there's requests for custom coupe walkthroughs. So people. I feel 99% chance we're, I'm going to be doing a walk through here very soon out in Sandpoint, Idaho. Um, our road crew has been out there putting together a beautiful custom hybrid of a Carolina. And they have the new rollout nest boxes. Mm. And I haven't seen them in person yet. They are gorgeous. I am thinking once the jet stream kind of works back in their favor, uh, um, uh, and it warms up a little bit because he, he can literally throw a rock to Canada. I mean, they're so close to the Canadian border. Uh, the, the service up there is not good. So we won't be able to go live and do a walk around. That would be my dream. But we will have a video here very soon of some walk arounds coming up. Good. Evan says he knows. I know, I know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Evan I, knows what's wrong with the board. I, I might have seen a, the right guess. Do we have more guesses? We have um, wood glue forgotten in joints. I, uh, what about John Canfield? He said, we got Scottish boy. I'm the pocket holes on the center bit of would be going in the other way. There is a chicken John, question. I'm feeding yeah, my chickens holes. the laying hens crumbles. Do they need grit separately as well? So while you guys are looking at the answers. Pocket holes in the wrong direction on one board, John said. Nope, not it. No? Nope. Uh, how about, do you got to feed grit separately for your chickens? They find their own grit. Yeah, they do. What if they are for, uh, only in a run and a customer, against all the best advice we can give them, puts down a concrete pad for their chickens to walk you on? You would probably need to provide it. Yeah, exactly. I just I do free, free choice grit in a little thing yeah. if they need it. If hey, you buy one container of grit, you probably never have to buy it again. Yeah. <laughs> Garrett says they didn't drink enough beer while building the wall. All right, so I'm going to let Evan answer it. And I have not seen all the comments. We will go back through it. If someone did say the exact answer, I'd be happy to ship you guys a shirt or a mug. Or, hey, we got, why do you guys call winter hats toboggans down here in the south? Yeah. What do you call them? Winter hats. Yeah, they're oh. hats. Toboggan. Beanie sometimes. Toboggan. <laughs> what, don't answer my question with a question. Only I do that. <laughs> um, why are they called toboggans? I, 
I don't know. Yeah, that's weird. We got Carolina Coops. <laughs> See, but Inger and I agree on it as well. Um, pocket holes in the wrong boards. It has something to do with the pocket holes. It definitely has something Not to do with the pocket at the holes. End of the board. It's very simple. And I just, I wanted. Not enough why, pocket holes? One of the reasons why I wanted to mention this is this is, it's, you know, one, one day saw a friend of mine said, How hard can chicken coops be? Well, Wait, that was me. Yeah, it was. I, I pointed when you weren't looking. Oh. Um, it's just, it's crazy, but it is an honest mistake, something that was forgotten. But um, Evan, if he's still there, he can go ahead and answer. But. We will wrap it up. And is there any other questions? You need one in here? In the so you're not going to be here next week? No. Um, Evan, Evan asked, can I get a zoom in on the vertical left board from top to bottom? Yeah. So that's what it is. They forgot there's supposed to be four lateral pocket holes. Because what wall number is this wall? I, I don't know right off. Yeah, how you do? you got it know? right on the test. I had to sit there and visualize the, it. This is a wall six, which means you got a wall coming here, and you got a wall coming in here. So you got to be able to screw this wall mm -hmm. to this wall coming in this way. Well, they forgot the two holes here. So one here, one here, and a pocket hole here, and a pocket hole there. And that might have been tricky to see, but you can see yeah. the pocket holes. I see them here on the monitor. But yeah, but nobody, I mean, I don't think people would realize where that what wall six means doesn't mean anything to me hey our you know we got some fans out there that are pretty sharp <laughs> um so it has missing pocket holes missing pocket holes i don't know that anyone got that it has missing pocket holes okay but where are they i mean people could just guess anyways well, all right that. let's wrap it up we got yes. more things to do we got a meeting to get into i got lunch oh, my i God. am hungry guys thank you so much for being here Sorry about the interruption in the uh, Wi-Fi there. Hopefully that won't happen okay. again. So you're going to be gone for how long? Uh, three weeks because gonna... I have travel on two Fridays. She's going to miss three Fridays. I'm going to try to get Dr. Crespo in on one of those Fridays. Yes, we have the vet coming in. Yeah, so there's a very good chance, guys, we may be actually off air for about three weeks. I also do need to travel, but if something comes up where we can do a show, absolutely need to do that. Um, it is time for me to go out and see my father. I need to go out and see a couple other coops that are going on out in the field. And I need time to do what I need to do. Yeah. So, very good <laughs> chance you won't see us till, gosh, December? No, I don't know. Middle of November. Yeah. Mid-November. Mid-November. Let's just say mid-November. You never know. I might have might, something come up yeah, next week. Yeah, we might week. pop on if we can. And Absolutely. I always try to hop on. If I get out to Sandpoint, Idaho, and I can figure out how to get good service out there, 100%. I'd love to show everyone a walk around of that chicken coop. Okay, so stay tuned, folks. Watch the old videos. Let us know if you have any questions in the comments when you watch it, and we'll make sure you get it answered. Yes, That's guys. Down. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend. Bye, guys. Love your chickens and each other. Remember, there we go.